to ARC. Sorry, and um, the main thing that we do, just to give you a little picture, it's not a really weird thing. The main thing we do is sweat lodges about twice a month. And they're open to anybody. So if you guys were up in Northern California and wanted to join me for a sweat lodge, they're open to the community. And it's essentially a time to get together and really connect with yourself. Um, it's been a big part of my personal growth and development. I'm really happy to share with you today. We're gonna to talk about the four directions. And the four directions are um, east, south, west, and north. And it may seem odd, like you may think about those as directions on a compass, but from a native perspective, an indigenous perspective, and I'm gonna do a cross-cultural indigenous perspective, so it's not Lakota Dakota, but it's truths that indigenous people found around the world over centuries. In fact, it's fascinating. People have done studies and determined that there's lots of similarities in this relating way of relating to the earth. It doesn't matter where you live. So, um, these different directions have energy. So a way to think about that is if you're going through a process of change in life, and we all are, um, the, um, the East is the visionary. It's spring and it kind of awakens you to new ideas. So instead of a lot of talking, another thing that's really important in Native ways is experience. So what we're gonna to do today is have an experience of the four directions through doing a guided visualization. And you'll get the most out of it. Um, go, Kathy, did you wanna say something? Um, before, you, before we go into it and everything, we're gonna do a welcome and self-introduction. I'm gonna share a little about Reiki, yeah. so I just want, okay, great, thank you. Good, so um, the last thing I'll say before we do get a chance to introduce ourselves is um, it's really helpful for you to have paper and pen because when we do the guided visualization, you're gonna close your eyes, you're gonna be comfortable. And when you come out, I'm gonna ask you some prompt questions that it's nice to be able to jot some notes down. We'll relate those, those answers that each of you have to what the energies are of the four directions. So Kathy, will you lead us through this, the introductions? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, this is really exciting. Thank you, Dad. So I know it looks like, you know, we're faces on a screen, but I, I would love everyone just to imagine for a moment that we're in a circle. Uh, maybe we're in a circle around a campfire in nature, someplace that you love. It could be a bonfire or campfire in, in the forest or in the desert, wherever it's safe to have a, a bonfire. And uh, so just for a moment, I'd love um, to create a sense of community. So I'd love everyone to just say, to take a breath and say your name and just one word like how are you feeling and is this your first time in this in this Reiki circle or not so um, so I'm Kathy and I'm just feeling very excited and connected and it's not my first time okay, mm -hmm. Doug? I'm Doug and this is the third time and it's been really fun for me to hear from different healing perspectives and I'm really excited about being here today. Yay. So uh, I'm just gonna invite everyone to share. You can pass if you like, but um, we'll have Francine go, Francine, then Andrea, and Donna, if you'd like to share, Eva, Terry, Madge, Andy, Annabelle, Devin and her friend, Jackie, Fran, sure. Sarah, Arjang, and Owen, if you'd like to share. So uh, Ooh, Francine. Wow. <laughs> Hey. Hi, I'm Francine, and this is the first time I've been involved with this, and I'm feeling relaxed. Hmm, nice. Andrea? Okay, hi. Um, my name is Andrea, and I'm nervous and excited at the same time. Uh, this is the first time that uh, I'm doing something like this, and I'm, I, I'm thankful that my sister invited me. Hey, Donna, would you like to introduce yourself or? Oh, you're on, you're on mute? You could pass. She's muted. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's my big sister, Donna. I'm working on the Zoom thing. <laughs> uh, I am Donna. I am her sister. And I am uh, working <sighs> hard to be open to today. I haven't seen you in 30 years at least. 
Hi. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen you in a long time either, Donna. It's Eva. Do you remember me? Hi there. Mm. Hi. Nice to see you. It's been a really long time. Okay, now the order's changed a little bit. So, Eva? Hi, I'm Eva, and this is my second time with this group, and I feel very relaxed, perhaps a little too relaxed, but it's all good. Awesome. Okay. Ter Terry? Hi, I'm Terry, and this is my second time um, in this Reiki circle activity or whatever we want to call it. Um, and I am feeling calm and happy, and I'm enjoying watching this mini reunion. That's very cool. <laughs> Thank you, Madge. Hi, my name is Madge, and this is my second time with the group. And um, I'm feeling curious because I still don't have any concept of what Reiki means. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Andy? Hello, my name is Andy. Uh, this is my second time here, and I'm feeling hyped. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay, Annabelle? Hi, I'm Annabelle. This is my first time here, and I am feeling very grateful to be part of this. So thank you. Awesome. Devin and Frank, would you like to say hi? Congratulations, graduate. <laughs> yeah. um, my name is Devin. This is my first time here, and I'm feeling hopeful. Oh, thank my you. My name is Melanie. This is my first Reiki circle, and I'm curious also and I think it'll be really interesting. Oh that's beautiful. Thank you. Jackie? Hi I'm Jackie. It's, a, it's my third time and I've just been inspired to keep coming back and um, very relaxed calm today. It's Sunday so it's good. <laughs> that's beautiful. Thank you Fran. Hi I'm Fran and this is my second time uh, in this circle and I'm feeling um, like receiving. Hi, Hi Sarah. I, I think this is my second or third time joining, and I'm feeling a little bit stressed, but looking forward to relaxing with you guys. Thank you, Sarah. All right, John. Hi. Hi, Kathy. Nice to um, see you. Yeah, great to see you. So, uh, love Reiki. I'm so excited to be here. This is my first time with this group. Uh, certainly not new to Reiki. I'm certified too, uh, but um, I don't practice like you do. I'm a sound healer and uh, uh, just excited to be here and know the power of Reiki and I'm feeling very blessed to be invited. Thank you. Aww, thank you. And Natasha, hi. Hello, I'm Natasha. It's my first time here. Uh, so I, I, I heard of Reiki, but I not know much about it. So I'm predominantly curious. <laughs> I'm glad you can make it. Thank you. And Thanks. then would Owen like to go or pass? Yeah. Hi, my name is Owen. This is my first time and I'm feeling uh, calm. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing it. It, it, it. Yeah, I really feel like we're we're around that around the campfire, around the circle. And thank you for sharing your how you're feeling and intentions, where you're at. So um, to very briefly, I'm going to talk just a little bit about Reiki and what it is, and then I will be sharing Reiki distantly, which some people don't, you know, have an idea what that is. Um, I'm just going to be kind of in the background, um, sharing a loving intention while Doug shares um, the four directions and brings you on a journey. Um, so... Um, so what is, so, but, you know, I, I think I see Reiki as a, it's a, is a life force energy. So Reiki comes from Japanese and life force energy. And some, some people call it chi or prana. So it's just a, a energy that flows through everything, every living thing. And so um, through Reiki, um, being a Reiki practitioner, uh, we, it's just kind of a channeling or redirecting this energy, channeling and bringing it to us and then through us to other people. So we, um, we can share, you know, I say through our hands or through our bodies, um, the energy comes through us and, and goes to where we direct it. So 
with intention and with a heart and bringing in sometimes our Reiki masters or um, our ancestors or light beings, we can share this energy. And um, it, in general, it, it's for wellness and sharing love, a kind of a loving energy. It's a very healing energy and, and it's an intelligent energy. What I've told is it's just very in, intelligent. So I can, I can direct and share it with someone. It's like giving someone a big hug and they kind of feel that energy and it kind of knows it kind of knows where to go, what to do. So it's known to, um, to bring us calm or groundedness. Um, sometimes different emotions are released and dissipated. And um, those are just a few of, of the things that Reiki can do. Um, that what is kind of, is really neat, I think, I'm very enthusiastic about this, is that it can share, be shared distantly. So I've learned during COVID that I don't need to be in the same room or the same home or the same town to, to kind of, sh to direct or share, to bring in someone else, um, can, to kind of unite with someone's energy and, and to share that. So, you know, you've heard of virtual hugs, you know, we've been practicing that a lot during COVID. So it's sort of like a virtual hug where with my intention and your imagination, we can share that hug. So that's just very, very brief. Um, but I will just, just know that I'll be here in the background um, bringing you in and just um, sending this loving energy to all of you. And you may feel a little bit, you, you may not feel it and it's all good, okay? So that's what will be happening in the background. So at this point, I'm gonna mute everybody just so we have a nice quiet environment. Um, Doug, this is, all, this is all yours now. And um, in the very end, we'll be doing a close, kind of a closing circle. And then Doug will talk about at four o'clock when we finish the circle, if you'd like to stay on and do more sharing, he's gonna talk about that. So anyone who want, wants to kind of share how they're feeling, what they're doing, um, and will have any questions, you could stay on after four. Hi, everybody. Thanks again for being here. It's really an honor to stand in the lineage of... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry I muted Doug. Me too. Okay. Hi, everybody. It's really awesome to be here today, and it's an honor to stand in the lineage of my teachers, um, particularly as a, a person of lighter skin. Um, I've been very fortunate to be able to have um, teachers who... Um, have reached across boundaries and have asked that uh, people of the lighter persuasion learn their ways because the earth needs it and society needs it. So just know that, um, that I'm doing this uh, with a glad heart and with, um, with respect for the Lakota Dakota people. Um, again, I'm going to do it more in just a cross-cultural indigenous way, but I, I wanted to say that much. Um, so the native teachers that I've been uh, exposed to um, have two instructions that are important for you today. So the format's gonna be, we're gonna do a guided visualization because native people think that experience is the best teacher. And they don't mean the school of hard knocks. They mean that we're alive and that life force in us and in our communities and in nature has guidance and things to give us if we pay attention. But the most important, and so we're gonna do the guided imagery and then I'm gonna ask you some questions and you're gonna be your own teacher. That's the format. But the, the instruction that I've heard most often in any ceremony or any teaching I've done with native people is don't have to believe anything. You don't have to believe anything. Just try, try what we're gonna do and see for yourself. And it's absolutely fine if, you know, if you don't learn anything. There's no judgment to that. It's more about having an experience and listening to your own inner wisdom. And that doesn't have any, any, um, you know, uh, any boundaries in terms of um, comes from, you know, any people. We all have inner wisdom. So just listen to yourself. And then the other thing is, I'm going to ask you to pay attention to yourself and really, you know, observe your, your own thoughts, your own feelings. But I ask you just to notice, one of the things that happens often when we do guided experiences is we fill in the blanks with what we should or shouldn't be doing, or we let our minds wander. Just come back to my words and try to, as much as possible, immerse yourself in the experience and notice the details. 
In the native way of thinking, a detail like seeing a turtle on a rock might have some you know, big value for you. And again, don't believe that, but do stay open and have an open heart. So anytime in the native ways, in my experience, there's always an opening and closing prayer. And I really only know how to do this in a certain way. So I'm just gonna let it come through me in the way that I know. So feel free to take a breath and feel where you are. So Tonkashalo Wonkong Tonka. Thank you for this opportunity to sit in circle today. Thank you for these people and all the goodness that they bring into the world every day. Tonkashala, you can look into our hearts and minds and see far more than we'll ever know. Ask today that you help us know more of ourselves, that through the lens of the healing energies that come to us in this earth, that we may be better guided to know ourselves and to be more of service to those that we love, to our communities and to this planet. Ho Matakuyase. Okay. So um, we're gonna do this guided visualization and it's good for you to get comfortable. Try not to fall asleep. That happens sometimes and that's okay too, but just be comfortable. Take a breath and feel in to yourself. It's gonna take about 10 minutes. I definitely suggest that you have your eyes closed. And when you have your eyes closed, um, what I'm gonna ask you to do is to really um, observe details. As we go, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down a river. Each of you is gonna be on a raft and go down a river by yourselves. And I'm gonna direct something to the inner commentator or critic that's in all of us. I'm gonna tell you right now that you're perfectly safe. I'm in this guided visualization, nothing's gonna to happen to anybody. And that may seem silly because we're sitting in our houses, but I want you to be able to be really open. And I want you to know that no harm will come to you. Your only job is to experience and enjoy the river, to float down a river and be an observer. And again, I want you to really notice details. And if you get into kind of a dreamlike state, that's wonderful. Um, because being in that state, um, in this way of, of thinking, your unconscious or your intuition, however you want to see it, is going to, to bring you messages. So as everybody settled in, they have their paper and pen to the side of them so they can write afterwards. And here we go. So the scene is daybreak on a perfectly comfortable day, and you've just arrived in a car in a parking lot with two friends and you've been asleep, they were in the front seat, they've jumped out of the car and they've headed down to the river and they've jumped into the river and they've headed off ahead of you. And you're in that just waking state and it's dawn. And you get out of the car and I want you to see yourself get out of the car and leisurely stretch. Notice how good the air feels on your skin. You're near the river and you can hear the river talking and you have a peaceful, peaceful feeling inside. And then this is very important. I want you to see that your friends have inflated your raft, but I want you to imagine your raft. And I, and I want you to imagine that it's the most comfortable raft that you've ever been in. In your mind's eye, see the raft. Color, does it have arms rests? It's so comfortable. You're gonna spend some time now in that raft and no one could have made a better raft to suit you. It's just inflated perfectly. Notice the details. So now pick up that raft and I want you to walk down to the river. And as you walk down to the river, you're going to hear the crunching of the gravel and you can find yourself in that way, when you just have the freedom to do what you want, maybe you could hum or sing to yourself. Walking and walking, you feel so at peace. And I want you now to step into the water and push your raft out, and I want you to notice the water. You may have felt it was cool, but it's very comfortable. You're very, very comfortable. And as you push your raft on and get situated, I want you to let the gentle current pull you down the river. You don't need to paddle. You're not gonna hit the shore. 
just float. There's no people on the banks of this river. There's no houses. You're surrounded by nature. Let that world around you be full of life. Look around. What do you see? Maybe you look at the sky. What are the clouds like today? Maybe you feel how comfortable it is to be supported by the water in that raft of yours. Maybe you hear the birds singing now. You're just floating. And after a while, you notice that the river picks up speed and you think, I'm in the perfect place at the perfect time. And after a while, maybe you dozed off because it feels hot now. And I want you to notice how hot the air feels, how good it feels to lay out in the, hot, in the heat because you have the perfect amount of sunscreen and you're perfectly prepared. And I ask you to notice your body. What do you notice about your body lying there in the sun? And when you look around and you're all alone on this river in the wild, the wildness of nature, what do you see? How do you feel? And I want you to notice that the water is picking up speed now. And on one side of the canyon, it's, it's a tall canyon wall. Look up at the wall. You're down in the river. And now you're going to glide right through your first rapid. And the river is carrying you forward and you trust it. You're tuned in. You can scan the banks. Again, do you see any animals or creatures? And if you don't make one up, let your imagination be free. It feels peaceful to be swept down the river. And as you round the bend, you see way down the river and those two friends of yours, they're waving their arms frantically. They're far off, but they're frantically waving their arms. And you wonder what the heck as the raft picks up lots of speed. And now you're in big rapids. And before you know it, the raft is brushing against rocks left and right. You're holding on tightly. Water is splashing, you're getting soaked. The water is loud now. You swing around, leaning, leaning, leaning to avoid some rocks and you almost tip over. And you push yourself up on your raft and you see your friends are screaming. They're waving their arms frantically and you can't hear them. And then it happens and you shoot through a rushing rapid with giant boulders on all sides and you almost get uh, dragged into a protruding tree. And you're trying to steady yourself by grabbing anything and the raft has gotten backwards. It's spun around backwards. And suddenly with you backwards, you shoot off a three foot waterfall all the time wondering why your friends did not wait for you. And you're thrown into the air and there's a powerful splash and then silence of being underwater. And you're in the green deep water. And you think about a beloved person who's died. Why did that happen? Who's that person? See their face. And you wonder if they're watching out for you as you come up for air and you're fine. You scan your body and you're fine. You just have to collect your stuff. So go ahead and collect your stuff and get your raft to shore. It doesn't take that long. Things didn't get too spread out and you're grabbing your raft and you're getting to shore. 
And then what happens next? But you hear voices and you look up the river and you see a big group of college kids who look drunk or sound drunk because they sound crazy and they're loud. And you have the presence of mind to collect your stuff and take out your paddle and get in the river and start paddling. And you paddle and you paddle and you work to distance yourself. You're not totally collected from that experience, but you're paddling and you're moving forward. And you hear yourself wondering a lot about what kind of friends do you have that would leave you like this, go away knowing what was going to happen and not look out for you. And something happens, you just decide to show up for yourself. And you say in this last 30 minutes of going down the river, smooth and steady, I'm okay. And of course, it's a bunch of college kids. And so they pull out of the water like muskrats way out behind you. And you just sort of laugh to yourself and say, I'm okay. And as you get to the landing spot and you start to pull your boat on shore, you slip to one knee and just then as you get to one knee, a bald eagle flies right overhead. Look at it, look at that bald eagle. It's huge, magnificent, and it has a fish in its talons and it lands in a big pine not far away and it's so close and it looks right at you. It's good to have your feet on the ground and you fully recovered and you're feeling so grateful to see that bald eagle. And you're in a different place from when you left this morning. So thank you for journeying down that river with me. And I ask you now to open your eyes, take your time. I hope I gave you enough time in between all those instructions to have some kind of experience. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to ask you some questions and I don't want you to think too much. I just want you to write down the first word or two that comes to mind. So how do you feel right now? One or two words. How do you feel right now? Just let it, whatever it is. And was there something that distracted you or stood out emotionally about that whole experience? Do you have uh, uh, any kind of difficult feelings? Let, let those get down on paper too. In fact, I'd like you to go back to getting thrown in the air, going off a waterfall with your friends far away. What was it like to lose control? What was it like to be left by your friends? Did you react differently than you expected? And I'm going to ask kind of one of those weird big picture questions that require you to suspend your analytical brilliant minds and just listen into yourself. What does the raft that you so beautifully crafted that kept you safe, you were not hurt, what does that raft represent? Any, anything that you put down is perfectly fine. You don't need to understand. And what does the river represent? So I can't see how you guys are doing. Is there a way, Kathy, that we can get a, a wave from everybody? So I know I did that experience pretty quickly, but I also know that you're very imaginative people. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk about the four directions because the way that that journey was set up is like any major change in life. It started with the east at sunrise. It went out into the slow, calm river of summer. 
It went into the turbulent water of, of um, teacher or fall, where we either get the abundance of holding our attention and living our life, or we, you know, we have those struggles that we have to challenge. How do we learn from those? And then it went into that place where we just, we worked down that last stretch of the river, which would be the winter where we're integrating or taking in for ourselves what our lessons were. And I'd like to suggest to you that Native people have this idea that there aren't shortcuts, that when we want to make meaningful change in our life, when we have the intention for something different, that it's going to go through, not always in a linear way, Native people are not stuck on line, you know, things having to follow, but it's going to go through stages. Any major changes we have in our lives are going to go through stages. And at some point they're gonna to touch on those and that it's important to go through stages. We're at a time right now where our youth are leading us to make great change, to make real progress. And in the native way of thinking, it's important that we have lived experiences. It's important that we pay attention to our own experience in those lived experiences and stay connected to ourselves. And it's important that we recognize that change goes through cycles. We're on this planet. So let's talk a little bit about these four directions in some more detail, because I'm gonna come back to these questions I asked you and have you reflect on yourself. So we, as I mentioned, we started in the East, which is the idea of the East is daybreak. And at daybreak, you know, you've, you've just awoken from your slumber. And often at daybreak, at sunrise, you, you have new ideas. Things have happened in your sleep. And you're awakening sometimes, not always, believe me, but sometimes with fresh new perspectives. So the idea from the native point of view of, of the East of awakening when the sun rises is the visionary. And I don't mean grand visions, like you're supposed to wake every morning and you're supposed to know how your whole life is gonna work out and, and, and you get this picture. That can happen, but more often from a native perspective, it's the little whispers, the little ideas, and are we paying attention to ourselves? And I mentioned that you hum or sing on the way down to the river. I probably didn't give you half a second to do that. Probably only Andy or some of our more accomplished musical people could do that in that short amount of time. But the idea is if you're stuck and you're in the same place that music or humming can help you get unstuck. The tool, each of these directions in cross-cultural indigenous cultures, remember from the Arctic all the way to the equator and, and all around the world, they, they develop this cosmology of these directions. And that singing is a way to help spark new ideas and new feelings within ourselves. And that the other thing I wanna point out is that I very deliberately asked you to know that you were gonna be safe. So that's setting intentions in the native way. So that the idea is as we get up in the morning, and we have this new insight and we ask ourselves, how can things go well? What would it look like for things to go well? That's what they mean by visionary most of the time. They don't necessarily mean, again, you know, it's all worked out for you. And then um, I ask you to, to look for animals. So um, if any of you saw animals from a native point of view, um, each animal has a particular essence quality and so it just helps us to tune into ourselves better. So if you noticed a deer, for instance, from a native perspective, that might be helping you to know to be gentle with yourself. It doesn't matter whether you use animals, but it does matter that you pay attention to what, what is in your environment and how are you relating to your environment as a way of better understanding yourself. So that's the visionary, being quiet, listening, sunrise, and paying attention to your environment. And in the, um, in the visionary, we talk, about, um, we talk about honoring life purpose. So that, that's, that's a lot of what the visionary is. So now we're gonna talk about the healer. So we got out onto the river 
and things were going well and we're just floating along and we're observing. That's the summertime, that's the south. So in the south, in this cosmology or way of thinking, you've, you've awoken, there's a new idea or something new that you're, you're holding an intention that you wanna bring forward. And then as you get to noon, midday in the heat, it's really important to pay attention to your body, to listen to your own self and to notice your body. So I wondered in those questions, if there was something, and I hope I remember to ask you this question, if there was something that caught your attention in relation to your body. Did you feel nervous? Because that might be a way that you are that, that, that you need to you know, be mindful of. Did you feel very peaceful and relaxed? That's wonderful that you can get to that state. When the sun was on your body and you had everything you needed, did your mind wander into what else maybe you might need that I wasn't mentioning or, or could you stay in that place? Because as we make change, it's really helpful as that we can be in the summer of our change, that we can get the lessons we need, that we can observe and collect the information that we need and that we can participate um, and take the lessons in. And in the healer, the idea is following what has heart and meaning. So when you talk about the healer, they're not thinking about a medicine man that is healing you. They're saying that we're all healers and that if we follow what has heart and meaning in our lives, that these intentions or visions will take care of themselves as long as we're really paying attention to ourselves. So then we went into the rapids and the rapids is the teacher. The rapids is the West. The rapids is sunset. So we've been awake in the morning, we've been to noon, now the sun is setting and the idea of the West, of this energy of the teacher is that there needs to be lessons learned or we never grow. And, and lessons can come from a nice summer. We might've had one rapid, but there are many times that a raft gets spun around. And you know what were the lessons? And particularly that question of what was it like to be left by your friends? And is that different than how you'd expect? So the nice thing about that question is it gives us a window into how much we we're thinking about what our friends should do for us versus the native way, which is we are in community and we should take care of each other. And it would have been nice if the friends had warned you that the river had big rapids and was going to throw you off. But in the native way, it's more important that the teacher be yourself that you learn from your own lessons in your own way and at your own time. And so it's good to know and have some insight into how you respond to people being there or not being there, because that can help you get back to not repeating that response all the time, say being frustrated or angry or, or you know, stuck in some way. And then a big question is when you get thrown into the air, when life comes along and, and, and the most comfortable raft in the world can't keep you afloat in the, in the flow of your life, what is that like for you? What's it like to get thrown? How do you feel? It makes me scared and angry a lot. That's okay. But what that does is that says to me, I'm scared and angry right now about what's going on in our society. How do I come back to myself and use my tools for, for uh, fear and anger. And so the teacher is about learning life's lessons and integrating those lessons so that we can continue to grow in our own way as, as healers, visionaries, teachers, and warriors. We'll get into warriors here in just a second. And then the point about, did you see a person's face underwater? That may have been odd to many of you and that's fine. But in the native perspective, in times that are difficult, and you hear people say this sometimes, you know, I feel my mom's around. In the native perspective, um, people or energies, it could just be you carry someone in your heart and your unconscious is reminded of them because they had a certain quality. We all have unique individual qualities. It's helpful to you at the time. It doesn't matter. We're not talking about ghosts, but we're just talking about, you know, being aware of the energy or the ancestors of people who've passed who may be around to help you. And I asked you to look and see, and again, I hope I didn't go too fast, 
because it's good to know. It's good to have a picture of that grandparent up or that person around because we all face times of challenge and society certainly has big challenges and needs for big change right now. And it's good to call on within yourself whatever is helpful for you. And in the native ways of thinking as I've experienced them, ancestors are powerful in that regard. Now the last is the one that's most confusing for people, which is warrior. Do you remember that you were able to put everything together on the beach? You remember that? And you were able to get back in and you needed to row and work? So the, the um, warrior is about the north, you know, your true north. The storms come from the north, but we all have a true north. We all have unique individual gifts that represent who we are. And it's midnight, it's dark, and you have come through these life lessons and now you're gonna put them to work. And you're going to do that in the winter. And each of these also have a quality that I haven't been mentioning, like you know, uh, fire is the healer because it burns away things. The teacher is water because it, it, you know, it, it sustains us. And warrior is earth. And I bring that up because um, our culture tends to think of warrior as, as action that can be destructive. But in the native way, warrior is right action. That means when is it time to do something? After I've learned my lessons, when is it time to actually take action and be that, that different, better part of myself? That's warrior. And the key to warrior, and this is really important, and the one thing that I most would like you guys to get in this time we're in, the key to warrior, to right action, is extending honor and respect. So we think of warrior as domination or power, but in the native way, warrior is extending honor and respect exactly to those who, who have been teaching you your lessons, who have been um, calling you to, to action. And so extending honor and respect can be a smile, it can be a compliment, it can be learning something differently, it can be, if you're a prayerful person, praying for, for somebody or some group, that's warrior, okay? Prayer is warrior medicine, and indigenous cultures know that. So whatever your experience was, please don't judge yourself. All I want to do today in talking to you about four directions and intentionality is just bring in this notion that there are cultures and people that have a lot to teach us. And this earth-based way of the seasons and of change having cycles is really helpful to hold individually and collectively right now. So, um, I asked you, I uh, think a question about how did you feel? And it's good to know your feeling tonality. And again, not to judge your feeling tonality. I'm somebody who deals um, with a lot of anger and fear. So being aware of that is really useful for me. And the what did you enjoy most question, I hope again I asked that. It's good to know that there's go-to things that work for you, um, that bring you, you know, meaning and purpose into your life. So I'm going to um, tell you a little illustrative story because um, as you've heard about the four directions and had an experience on a river and had a little time to reflect, not much time to reflect, but a little, um, I think it's useful to know this story. So the story is there's an old Cherokee man and he's been sitting on his porch all day long and he looks very concerned. And he has a grandson that he absolutely loves and who loves him. And the grandson's been coming back and forth all day. And finally he says, grandfather, what's the matter? What's going on? And the grandfather says, there's a fight going on inside of me. And the boy says, who's fighting? And the grandfather said, it's a terrible fight. And it's between two wolves. One is good and one is bad. And the one that is, or is evil, and the one that's evil is about anger and envy and sorrow and regret and greed and ar arrogance and self-pity and resentment and false pride, superiority and ego. And the other part of me, the other wolf inside of me that is good is about joy, peace, love, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, 
generosity, truth, faith. And the same fight is going on inside, inside of you and inside of every person. And the grandson thinks and thinks, and he finally says, grandfather, who is going to win this fight? And grandfather says, the one you feed. So my point in taking you on an inner journey is to feed the good parts of yourself and be aware of the others with gentleness and kindness. And in the native ways of thinking that I've seen and had taught to me, life will bring you exactly what you can handle. And if you're paying attention and learning from your life, you'll grow in just the ways you need to be to express your unique embodiment of great spirit. So that is that. And in the native ways, before we uh, move on, um, it's important that we close um, the spiritual container again, the only way I know how, which is through this way of praying. So I ask you all to take a breath, feel into your bodies. Tonkashila wonkon tonka. Thank you for this opportunity to be in circle today. Thank you for the sacred hoop that is our lives. Thank you for the great teacher that is the earth and the sky and the directions and the animals and the plants and the smallest insect. Help us to honor these lives all around us. Help, our, help us to extend honor to our fellow human beings, regardless of where we understand them or not, and help us mostly to be gentle and kind and loving to ourselves. Tonkashla, we know that that is so, and that this ceremony has helped us in exactly the way we need. And Tonkashla, I say palamia, 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 palamia. Gratitude for this chance to be together. Oho, matakuyase. Okay, Kathy. <laughs> Thank you. That was beautiful. That was amazing. I really appreciate you sharing your wisdom and your experience of bringing us on this journey. Um, did you? Would you like to do a closing circle where people can share right now? Or I think it would be really helpful for us all to come back together and, in just a sentence, say something um, that you got or even if you didn't get anything, say a question that you have, and we don't need to dialogue or talk about it. And then I'm gonna offer that we do the passing stick ritual for anybody, the, the talking stick ritual rather, for anybody who wants to stay on, um, if anybody wants to, has questions or wants to have a little dialogue, and it's fine if you wanna leave. So will you do what you did before and take us all through, and if anybody is willing to say anything that stood out for them was helpful or a question, and I ask everybody to please keep it short. Okay, so um, if you'd like to share, please unmute yourself and we'll just you know, unmute yourself and share a short word. And then um, I'd like to um, tell you a little information how you could get a hold of me if you'd like to know more about Reiki or what I've been up to. And Doug is gonna talk about a few organizations to help um, donate some funds to uh, Native Americans in our country that are um, suffering because of COVID, and then we'll have the final blessing. So unmute yourself and just share if you like, very briefly, how you're feeling. So okay. I um, really got a lot out of that, and I just want to say thanks. Um, I got, am I on? Yes. <laughs> Okay, I got a lot out of that and I very much enjoyed it. And I uh, appreciate you both and I'm grateful for you sharing your gifts and time. Quick question, the raft and who or what it represents is safety and security, is that correct? Um, in the native way, it's, it's good for you to notice uh, what you think it represents because the raft is about um, how you're carried through your life and how much support you feel. So if you identified safety and security, then that's what the raft meant for you. Okay. And yeah. So, it, so um, trust yourself in your answers. Okay. Thank you. And I do. Uh, 
I don't know if we're doing like a passing stick kind of thing, but um, <laughs> I, in in terms of like that last response, thank you, Terry. Um, I was kind of thinking a lot about my river and right now my river is my career. So thank you for enlightening me on that. Um, what was funny, a funny realization to me was when you said like, oh, your friends left you. Like, how do you feel? I'm like, they didn't leave me. They're just looking for me down the river. So I guess that means that like the friends I was with, I trusted that they didn't leave. Me and too. I, I just didn't know where they were. Yeah, and me too. I actually thought that the, my friends were, the reason they were screaming and shouting is that they were trying to warn me, but that me I, couldn't, too. I couldn't hear it. And then I was sort of like, all right, I'm on my own here. I got to figure this out. So. <laughs> yeah, me as well. In fact, I thought that they also fell in the river and got thrown. And so that also happened to them as well. And that's yeah. what they were trying to warn me about. Me too. You're all of generous spirit. Thank you. That's <laughs> wonderful. Um, I was going to say, Doug, I really liked what you said about, or when you mentioned, like, if you saw a deer, because that is, like, one of the animals that I saw, yeah. um, and that the reminder to be gentle with yourself, that's something that I really, I think, needed to hear, and it was really, like, nice to hear you say that when it was something that I, I had seen in my, like, mind's eye. That's great, yeah, it's, if, if other of you noted animals that you saw, um, it's, it's, helpful to take a look at kind of what is the essence quality of that animal and there's ways to do that that I can share with you another time. I would like to stay on and ask about the two other animals I saw. That'd be great. Look forward to it. Okay. Thank you, Doug. And I can't stay on, unfortunately. I have a guest coming over, but I'll stay till four. But you guys, I just thank you so much. This was just lovely. I I just want to say I felt so relaxed on that river. It's like, because I've been fantasizing, our pools are closed, and I have been fantasizing of being like the graduate Dustin Hoffman on a, on a raft on the, on the, in the pool because it's been so hot, but you just gave me that experience, so thank you. I think you gave it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to, to say that what was most meaningful to me, Doug, was the grandfather story. And I, I realized that what we feed, what we pay attention to, is where we grow in the ways that we're looking to do so. So thank you for that. That was beautiful. <laughs> it's a classic yes <laughs> thank you is there anybody else who'd like to share a word yes yes yeah thank you Arnett. yes um i just want to um express how grateful i am to both kathy and doug both of you um this experience has been so so beautiful um uh, Doug, the information, the guided meditation was just that, just perfect and exactly what was needed for me. I felt really, really calm and relaxed through the entire trip. Um, and actually, what I wanted to share about it was that I wanted more. I said, no, no, it, it's not over yet. Let's keep going. And then afterward, when we were discussing about the four directions, at the end, I was brought to tears. And I said, wait, I didn't bring any tissues. You didn't say we needed Kleenex, okay? <laughs> 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 so it was just so fulfilling on so many levels. I'll try to stay on a little bit, um, but I just wanted to thank you Thank you both for this beautiful, beautiful journey. It's very deep and very meaningful. Thank you. Uh -oh. Annabelle or anyone else want to jump in and just say something small about their experience? Yeah. Um, thank you. First of all, thank you guys so much for this experience. It was incredibly moving. Um, 
I, for me, the, when we flew off the waterfall, uh, it, it felt almost relieving to me. It was sort of a surrender kind of moment. Um, so I just wanted to share that. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Natasha? Hi. Uh, first, thank you both. That was very interesting. Uh, for me, as much as it was relaxing on a start, it actually made me mad when we ended up on rapids and waterfall because I would, I'm <laughs> not interested for that. I don't like heights. Uh, I don't like speed. And I would never put myself in that position. So, But that was intriguing because normally I, do get, I don't get mad very often. It's very hard to get me mad. I usually get hurt or sad as a reaction. I rarely get mad. But I got mad this time. So that was very interesting. Thank you for getting mad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to share. I'm just like so over, um, overjoyed and overwhelmed um, for, with all your beautiful sharing. And everyone showed up today and you're sharing your heart. And, and really, I'm... I want to keep uh, having these Reiki and healing arts circles just just for this uh, reason because we are dealing with so many so much you know going on right now with COVID and the civil unrest and all the emotions that we're feeling uh, ourselves and uh, the people we know and uh, collectively as a as a as a nation and the world. So um, if we could just you know come together and and hold the space um even f you know for if it's for an hour or or and we take what we've um learned or felt you know going on you know with a week then i just you know so pleased that we just have this ah, handy um, <laughs> moment of peace and just ah, being here just right now right here it, it's just so delicious and yummy so th you know thank you so much and um, I do want to share briefly um, that in two weeks, or the next circle is um, going to be Reiki plus um, um, affirmative prayer. My friend Bob Estrada from the Center for Spiritual Living is a, is a practitioner, a prayer practitioner. He's going to share a little bit about the power of the mind to create our realities. You know, it's like law of attraction kind of thing. And he's going to guide us in a beautiful um, kind of healing and inspirational and empowering uh, prayer, what we call prayer treatment in um, declaring what we want in gratitude mm -hmm. and uniting with a source of a source or spirit or God or, or just energy, whatever it is. And then it is that surrender at the end of this kind of prayer treatment is so lovely because you just declare, I want this. I'm grateful for what I have. I let it go. So some of what we're doing is holding on to a lot of things but sometimes we just have to trust and let go. So uh, that'll be in two weeks. It'll be at the same time on the 28th. So very quickly, I'm going to share my screen. Um, and um, hopefully you can see this slide. Um, Doug, do you want to talk briefly about this? Yeah. So right now in the world, if you all don't need to do this, but I'm just trying to give you a pathway. Um, Native peoples uh, don't have resources. They're the most impoverished people in our country um, as a demographic segment. And these two organizations, Partnership with Native Americans and Southwest Indian Fund, are doing a lot by um, providing resources to people in these communities, particularly right now to help with COVID. Um, so these are great organizations, and if you all were to make any donations to us today, we would pass it on to one or both of these, and if you want to, um, to do anything like that, it doesn't matter how much, um, that would be awesome, because these communities need a lot of help right now, um, so just encouraging that, that's all. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so um, also if uh, most of you know me already, but if you uh, would like to um, check out my website, it's on wingsofjoy.com. And I'd love to connect with you if we're not already connected to friends on Facebook or Instagram. You can always get a hold of me. And um, if you have any other questions, and if you have questions directed for, for Doug, I, I can pass those on. So I'm going to show you this. And uh, I'm going to say thank you again. And um, Doug, do you have a kind of closing prayer before nope, we... Nope, already did it. Time for it. We're right on time. Two minutes late. Everybody's welcome to sign off. Anybody who wants to stay on will wait a minute and I'll explain the talking stick. 
but everybody who would like to, to, pat, to go off, wonderful. Um, thanks for everybody who was here. Yay. So blessings for peace and love and joy on your way. Thank you for joining the circle. We appreciate it. Yay. Bye, everybody. <laughs>